Hi, today I want to talk to you about inks and when and when not to leave them out. So I've had a couple of questions about what I do with leftover ink and when it's a good idea to save ink and how do you save ink, stuff like that. So I thought I would show you uh, in this film a couple of things that um, about the inks that I'm using for the print. So if you look at the inks that I've got here, I was actually inking up yesterday and I left these specifically overnight to show you what's going on. So first of all, I would normally clear this bit up this is the base mix for some blue ink that I'm using for shadows um, and that's got no dryer in it and even though there's only a tiny bit there you can see it's still flexible. These little bits here are simply me checking the blue to see that I've got it mixed right down. So what I've been doing here is I've got blue and I'm mixing it with brown, it's phthalo blue and I'm mixing it with um, burnt umber brown. Now I have quite a lot of inks and basically that's because I like going out and buying different colours when I'm in a shop, it's kind of a um, fatal really to go and look at, at coloured inks. But for many years I only had the three primary colours and black and white and I mix pretty much everything from those. And then the first other colour I got was brown, and that was really useful. But you don't have to have lots and lots of different colours. It's perfectly all right just to have primary colours and black and white, and extender, of course, if you're going to work like me. But to go back to this particular set of mixes, so I've got the blue, I've made it a little duller and a little greyer by mixing the brown in because these are the colours I'm working on the far hills with. And I've also been inking up in pure white. I've been putting another layer of white on. I'm going to show you the print in the next film and actually show you the inking up of all these colours I'm talking about. So here's the white ink. Now, this uh, layer of solid white ink I have introduced drier to. The reason that I've introduced drier is because um, I'm working with the ink with no extender and I want to be absolutely sure that uh, that opaque layer is dry before I put anything else on it. So I've introduced dryer and I've left it overnight and if you can see looking at the ink just how stringy and granular that has become overnight. So this is a good example of ink that I would never save. Once it's got dryer in and that is that uh, Cranfield wax dryer that I was talking about in the film where I was talking about additives. So I really, really like this stuff, but once it's in, it's in. You can't, you know, you can't save the ink really. On the other hand, the blue inks, I haven't put any dryer in. There's lots of extender here in this ink, and hopefully you can see it's not granular, it's still perfectly usable. Now, that's nothing to do with the fact it's got extender in it. That is to do with the fact it has no dryer in it. So with these inks, I'm inking up in really, really thin layers. You'll see in the next film when I'm inking up. So I'm not bothering with dryer in those inks because I don't really need it. It's going on so thin that it's not necessary. Um, so I prefer to keep dryer free if I can. So those two colours there, they, they have no dryer in them. So when it comes to mixing your colours, that's another good reason for saving ink and something that I do a lot um, when I'm when I'm printing. I don't have an example in printing ink, but I do have it from my Japanese woodblock in watercolour. So I'm just going to show you. Here is a little book of colour mixing notes from uh, mixing for watercolours. And I don't know if you can see this page is quite a good example, but the colours I make up are all done by mixing a colour I've used into a colour I'm creating. So a lot of the time when I'm mixing colours there's kind of a bit of a colour that I've already used that I'll add to a new colour mix and that started off when I was a student because I had no money and I didn't want to throw any ink away so I got into the habit of using old ink to sort of bulk out new colours. 
But what I found over the years is that adding the complexity of a previous colour into a new colour really helps to keep the um, colour palette that I use kind of very natural and subdued and uh, a more sort of complex colour palette in a way. And that's just personal. That's that's entirely my taste. There's no reason that you would have to do that. Um, and I don't know if anyone else does it like that. But if you want to do that and you want to keep your ink um, overnight or, or what have you, then it's a good idea to cover it. And I'm really lucky in that I was given these delightful things. Um, these are actually paint mixing palettes and they're, they're kind of stackable. I use them for demonstrating sometimes because they're, they're really lovely. I can go to a demonstration to do Japanese woodblock and I have my watercolours in there and then I can stack them up and sort of take them to the demonstration and there they all are by magic. But they're actually also really good. So uh, for keeping the ink overnight and um, they keep the dust off and they stop my cats walking in the ink or anything like that happening. So I will just actually use the underside which is, is nice and high up and just pop one over and then that will keep the ink and the ink does last a long time. I should think you've probably got, I would be happy to leave it oh, two or three days easily without worrying about it. But these are all oil-based inks. So that's the same, um, that's the traditional oil-based ink. The same can't be said for water-based inks. You can't leave those, they do dry out. Caligo inks, I don't work with enough to say for sure, but I have a feeling that they can skin after a little while. I may be wrong about that, but um, I'd be interested to know if anyone's got a comment about that. But certainly with the traditional oil base, you can pop something over to keep the dust off and leave them on the slab for at least two or three days. Probably longer in the winter, actually. They'd be fine. So that's a little bit about um, the inks that I've kept. Now I want some more white ink because obviously the one that I showed you is unusable. So I'm just going to pop a little bit more white ink out. Somebody was asking me about these. Uh, these are plastic. They're very, very cheap. Um, I got mine at Intaglio Printmakers in London and I think they were about 65p or something so I bought a load of those. Um, so here is my solid white. Now I use tins and tubes. You can get paints in guns um, and uh, it's, it's just personal choice. I, I like a tin of, of inks personally but however you you buy them is entirely up to you of course. So now I've got some white ink out. I just need to add a little bit of dryer to it and that was kind of the last thing I wanted to show you was, was adding the dryer. So I'm just going to put a little touch in. So really very little. That's if anything probably rather generous. So little touch of the dryer and I'm just going to mix that in well. So now I've done that, I'm on a, a limited time to use that, but when I say limited time, I mean hours rather than days. So that's a little look at the inks, and in the next film, we're going to go back to the print, and I'm going to show you inking up with the solid white and these very extended blues. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you've got questions, pop them in the feed and I'll try and include them in the film if I think everyone will benefit from them. Thanks a lot. Bye.